It is covered in moss. Where my idea came in is that it's covered in Peperomia prostrata. And I... Hello guys, so today I'm going to show you my creative plant projects that I've been working on. And to give a little bit of an update on the things that I've shown in previous videos, I consider anything that's more than just a basic plant in a pot a plant project. So things like aquariums, terrariums, uh, plant arrangements, creative displays with plants or kokedamas, those are all what I consider to be plant projects. And these plant projects are how I keep plants exciting and fun. I'm someone who gets bored of hobbies and interests pretty easily, but I don't think I could ever run out of things to explore and experiment with. You can grow plants that require different care or grow them in different ways with different growing mediums or say different fertilizers, for example, or you can explore how to integrate them into your home, which is one of my favorite things to do. I've seen some people lose their interest in plants and that's totally normal uh, for our interests to ebb and flow. But I think a lot of people that do become disinterested in plants aren't really exploring all that plants have to offer. For me, different plants give different experiences. So for example, growing a staghorn fern feels completely different than growing a monstera. Like the joy that I get with seeing one of my terrariums thrive is completely different than what I get out of seeing a philodendron thrive in my care. So I encourage you all to diversify the plants that you keep and approach plants a little bit more creatively and experimentally. So I'm going to walk around and show you guys my plant projects and maybe it will be a source of inspiration for you to maybe try on your own. Yeah, I got some pretty cool things to show you guys. Also, there's a lot of noise in the background. There's construction, uh, police sirens, dogs barking. You might hear that in the background. This was the first thing that I wanted to show you guys because I don't see many people have this. It is extremely cool to me, like just the concept and how it looks. So right now I'm in the office space and this is my desk, but the lighting isn't really great in here. So I'm going to take this out and show you guys in the kitchen. Let's go. So this thing is called a Dua Terra base. I'll put the link for it in the description. And this glass aquarium is uh, sort of specially made for this thing too. I will take it out and show you guys because it's hard to see when it's in the glass because of the condensation. Hello. It is covered in moss and um, some aquatic plants and I also have carnivorous plants on here. I have sundew growing on the top, and then the moss that it's covered in is aquatic moss. What's really cool about most freshwater aquatic plants is that they can grow out of the water as well as underwater. And when they grow out of the water, they have a different form. So there's like the immersed form and then the um, submerged form. The Dua Terra base is a clay cylinder. And because it is porous, the water that you fill it with slowly seeps out and keeps all of the plants hydrated. So on here I have aquatic moss and then I have some orchids and aquarium plants. But yeah, this thing is really easy to set up actually. I'll put in some before and after pictures. So pretty much I just put the plants on and then tied it around with string and attach them on. And then eventually the plants will actually root into the cylinder. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Here is where I have the sundew growing um, just at the top. I filled the terra base with aqua soil and I've never seen anyone else do that, but I did that because I wanted to be able to grow plants inside of it, um, growing out of it. So I have that. Some orchids and some bucephalandra. And here you can see the roots starting to grow out and into the cylinder. So I'm gonna put this back in its glass container. I don't know what to call it. I think I'll call it a terrarium. But I don't know, it's like a it's like a display case almost. It incorporates many of the things that I like, which is moss and uh, a creative way to display plants and then also some terrestrial plants. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys, I think is super, super cool. It is called a Tamandama and it was inspired by this one Instagram account, but I can't remember how to say their name. So I'm just gonna put it here on the screen somewhere. This thing is the Tamandama. So I was inspired by how they created these arrangements, like 
essentially with a kokedama, but um, instead of just being like one plant, it is an arrangement of plants. The creator of this idea lives in Malaysia, I believe, or somewhere in Southeast Asia, where they have a ton of humidity and specific materials that work really well with this project. Um, but here in Los Angeles, California, I don't have humidity or that specific material, which is some type of fern substrate. So I did my own take on it. And even the creator of this idea was like, whoa, how did you do that? So I feel very proud of myself. <laughs> so essentially, this is a kokedama and I created it the same way I created my other kokedamas, except I have a soil base inside. So this arrangement has a fern on here. I believe people call it a ribbon fern. Where my idea came in is that it's covered in Peperomia prostrata and I wanted to create something of a sphere of Peperomia prostrata and also the common name is string of turtles. My idea is to have it completely covered in this plant which it more or less is and then as it grows out it'll hang down. I also have this little staghorn fern growing on here which will hopefully eventually grow larger but we shall see. So the way that I was able to get the string of turtles attached onto the ball was I had to be very patient. I first very lightly tied all of the strings around the ball um, with a cotton thread and then I covered it completely with saran wrap or plastic wrap and then I had to wait for the string of turtles to grow roots into the ball and that took probably like a month and a half or so to really make sure that it was rooted and then I uncovered it and now I have this very cool creation. I do have to water it like every three days or so. It does dry out pretty quickly, which is unfortunate. These are mini terrariums with sphagnum moss. I really like sphagnum moss. It's one of my favorite mosses and I have it in a variety of my terrariums, but it stays interesting to me because I grow it in different ways. So I have them in these mini terrariums and then I also have it growing in this larger terrarium. I also have a kokedama moss ball that I'll show you guys right now, actually. It's one of my favorite things I've made. Also, Theo is begging for attention right now. Hello, hello. I love sphagnum moss terrariums. <laughs> you guys, we're trying to film a video here. So these are two other projects that incorporate sphagnum moss. So this is just a glass globe terrarium with an open top and I just put sphagnum moss in it and it started from all the way at the bottom and now it's grown to the top. So my sphere, which I really love a lot. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but I like round things with plants. My floating moss ball is just attached to a suction cup on top and it stays within this dome. Let me take it out actually for y'all. I made some pretty fun TikToks with this. So this is just a kokedama with live sphagnum moss tied around it, and it's been going strong for a while now. I use sphagnum moss in a lot of my projects, and even though it's the same plant, it stays interesting because I can incorporate it in different ways and do new things with it. Theo's eating food right now, so you probably hear him chewing. <laughs> you don't necessarily need a different plant, just incorporate it in a different and new ways. For example, you can have a vining philodendron climb or you could have it um, hang down as like a hanging plant or you could have it climb up a piece of furniture or attach it to your wall. There's just multiple things that you can do with plants that uh, I really like to explore. This is something that I don't know if I've shown yet, but this is some type of cypress. I forget the species name, but I'll put it on the screen. So like I said before, I really like when plants grow out of the water. I think it adds a lot of visual interest and especially with this plant, the way that it's skinny and tall and then it spreads out at the top is really cool and I think it looks really nice. A lot of the plants in the cypress family are really easy. You just need to make sure that they stay wet and that it gets a lot of light and that's pretty much it. I was having some algae problems in here so I put in a small snail from my balcony pond uh, to eat the algae and I'm gonna put it back soon. But yeah, it pretty much cleared up all of my algae problems. There is my cleaner snail and I wonder if you can see all of that poop, those little poopy looking things. Yeah, that's poop. I feel like I can't talk about creative plant projects without mentioning my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. So I have 
like two videos dedicated to this cabinet, so I'm not gonna go too in depth about it. But it's been a very nice creative outlet in terms of being able to grow different plants and seeing them sort of in their natural habitat. Um, it was also just like a very big project and it feels very rewarding to see it grow and just being able to try something different and having it succeed has felt very rewarding. So the reason why I turned it into this greenhouse thing was because I was feeling very uninspired by the regular greenhouse cabinet setup where it's just like plants but they're inside the cabinet so it's not very interesting. So yeah, I'm happy that it worked out and it paid off. So. This isn't necessarily a plant project, but it is pretty closely related to my plants. So this is my worm composter, also known as a vermicomposter. And I have worms in here. Yes, it's in my kitchen. I'm slowly getting over my fear of worms. Um, yeah, so exposure therapy is working. <laughs> Why I mention this is because I use old leaves or dead leaves or leaves that I cut off and I add them into my composter. And then eventually I'll use the compost, which are worm castings, as fertilizer for my plants. So it's like this cool circular thing of nutrients. I learned recently by browsing worm forums, I know, that it's better to freeze your organic material and then blend it together because it makes it easier for the worms to digest and they digest it faster. It's like chewing up the food for them. I've been freezing dead leaves and other things. I've just been blending all of these frozen leaves uh, together and then adding the smoothie into my worm bin and the worms have really been loving it. So I'm just gonna do that for you guys because uh, it is pretty interesting. It gives me an opportunity to use the dead leaves instead of just throwing them away. This is the blender that I use. This is the one that I also used to blend soil and moss together. I don't use this for things that I eat, by the way, so this is just designated to blending weird plant stuff. I did some pruning on my variegated money tree, so I'm adding this into the mixture. Some more leaves that I pruned. Then maybe we'll add some frozen orchid flowers, perhaps this banana peel. An added benefit to freezing it is that it will kill off the pests. So if there's any pests on my plants, then they'll die and it won't spread other pests to the plants that I put the worm castings on. I add hot water to this to make my smoothie. I use hot water so that way the coldness from the frozen material uh, isn't too cold when I add it into the compost bin. I'm gonna add a little bit more stuff in. Um, hmm, it doesn't smell bad. It just smells like plant. Mmm, green smoothie. I could sell this at farmer's markets. So I still don't like the idea of touching worms, so I'm gonna use my chopsticks. Uh, to move stuff around in here. When I open the composter, you can see the worms for a little bit, but then they kind of all scurry down back to the bottom. Uh, so I just fed this area recently, and that's why they're all gathered around here. So with vermicomposting, you want to spread out where you're feeding. Because I fed this quadrant last time, I'm gonna put my mixture over here. There's so many, oh, there's so many there. You, 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 you. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Look. Ooh. See, like, I shouldn't have put those eggshells in like that. I should have crushed them up or blended them. Y'all are eating better than me, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> so now I'm using the chopsticks to spread it out, and then I'll cover it with the cardboard. Currently re-evaluating my life choices. I don't know what led me to this point, but here we are. I put the cardboard on top so that way the lid doesn't get dirty with a bunch of my slime, but also because it keeps the moisture in so it doesn't dry out too fast. Okay, all fed. My children have food. And I know I could buy worm castings. They're not very expensive, but 
being able to make them myself and to have somewhere to put my waste. Creating my own fertilizer is another creative and interesting aspect of keeping plants. I really like this thing that I made. Uh, I thrifted this shallow glass dish. And here I have an arrangement of an asparagus fern and Pilea glauca. What I really like about this is that the glass dish is very shallow and then the asparagus fern and these grasses just like go up vertically and then they spread out. And then I also like how the Pilea glauca just drapes down. So it's a very cool arrangement with a lot of visual interest and I've had this growing in here now for over a year and yeah I should probably trim this soon because it's getting really long but I will do that eventually. So this is my anthurium pendants in a Vanda basket. I put this together in my creative ways to display houseplants video. I just love how this thing looks and it's putting out a new leaf. I could have just put this in a regular pot, but I decided to put it in an orchid basket and I even thought of hanging it from only one corner so that way it would drape more outwards. Yeah, I was just like, oh, why not? Like, why wouldn't that work? And I feel like that's how it is with a lot of my projects. Like, I think, oh yeah, that could probably work and then I do it and it looks pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah. In general, I think another way that I keep plants exciting is obviously making them almost like pieces of decor, like living decor. So I try to display them nicely. I just like putting plants in nice pots. I think that adds a lot to the funness of keeping plants is thinking, oh, what pot am I going to pair this plant with? and think about colors and shapes and growth structures. I wasn't sure if I was going to include my aquariums, but they do bring me a lot of joy and they are one of the more creative things that I do with plants. So I think you guys have seen this quite a few times, but this is the aquarium that I have, the wood with the blended moss that I painted on. Aquariums are really cool ways to experiment with plants and try something new. If you are a houseplant person, you would definitely gain a lot of experience and knowledge and information from trying to grow aquatic plants in aquariums. You can create these really beautiful arrangements and it's like you're creating your own world uh, even more so than in a terrarium because it's like a water world. <laughs> Playing with the idea of growing some of the plants out of the water, so above the water line and I tied them onto this log. I tried to think of how to grow my plants a little bit creatively and try new things. And what I really like doing with my aquatic plants and my aquatic setups is growing plants out of the water as well as growing them underwater, just because that idea fascinates me. And hopefully I'll fill this thing up soon. I think I'm gonna do it within a month or two months, probably a month because I'm getting impatient. Then this is my other aquarium that I've had running for a little bit. So I don't really know if I wanna keep this tall grass plant in the back because it grows really crazy and wild looking and it doesn't look very clean. And the intention for this aquarium is to have it look very clean and simple, but the grass is like going crazy. Um, with aquariums too, like I'm trying to do different things with these two different aquariums. Like this one, I want to look more wild and natural. And this one, I want it to look more serene and minimal. Although it doesn't really look like that right now. And it also doesn't look like that because I have like a million shrimp in here because they went crazy and bred a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Something else that's really cool and interesting about aquariums is that you can have different animals. So like shrimp or fish or snails and there's so much diversity within that. But I could go on and on about that because there's just so much about aquariums. And it is something that I recommend people venture into if you have the time and the space. It can feel really rewarding to have an aquarium and it's just a really good learning experience, I think. Also on my desk, I have a begonia terrarium with moss that I just set up recently. And this, which is a wabikusa. And a wabikusa is like a kokodama, but it's an arrangement of aquatic plants. I just set this up very recently, so it needs some time to grow in. This is my aquarium that I have in my bedroom. And I made a video of me putting this aquarium together. So you can watch that if you're interested and it's grown a ton. And so I experimented with um, tying the moss on the wood and having it drape down and then having moss above the water and then having plants grow out of the water as well. What's cool about aquariums is that you can experiment with like hardscape materials too, which are 
rocks and wood and there's so many different kinds of hardscapes and then different kind of layouts you can do and then different style aquariums you can do. Yeah, it's this whole whole thing in itself. Let me know if you guys want me to do like everything I know about aquarium type video because I've been hesitant to make a video about aquariums because one, it's difficult for me to film my aquariums uh, just because lighting and stuff like that, but also because there is a lot of information about aquariums and context and nuances that is hard for me to cover. And I don't know if people are actually interested in the aquariums too. So if you want me to make like maybe a video about like lighting and nutrients and plants, it would probably be a pretty long video, like 45 minutes or something, honestly. Let me know if that is of interest and I will make it eventually. I won't say soon, but at some point in my life. <laughs> this isn't like necessarily a project project, but I've been using my Song of India tree, also called Dracaena reflexa, as a very tall stake for my plants, but also just as a large pot to put plants in that I don't really know exactly where to put them. So I recently got a Monstera dubia from my friend Jahao. Thank you Jahao if you're watching this. Those plants need something wood to climb up. So most people grow them with wood planks but I'm using my tree and it's pretty cool because it's like in the wild they would grow up on a tree. I also have my Passiflora vine growing here and I just recently learned the species name. It's Passiflora amelocarpa. This is an awkward angle so it's difficult to film the plants here. Here you can see my Monstera dubia and it's climbing very well on this plant. It's attached itself. I think it'll do very well in this spot. Here is the Passiflora vine. Like I said, it's a pretty difficult angle so it's hard to show from the front, but here's that vine looking very pretty. And it has such a nice leaf shape like butterfly wings. And then here you can see it again just going up and yeah, I really liked seeing how the plants interact with each other. Right now it's searching for something else to climb, but I'll just put it on a longer branch. I also put this cute monkey hook on the tree and I have a little lantern hanging from it. Yeah, I've been using this tree for a lot of different things. So this plant project is how I displayed the plants or how I arranged them within my space. So I'm talking about my uh, vining philodendron that I have strung up on the ceiling and that I have draping around my curtain and my light. I was hesitant to do this at first because I was worried that it would look kind of tacky, that I just like pinned up the vines on the wall and it wouldn't look the way that I would want it to look, which is kind of like natural climbing, draping, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like fully natural, I guess, but it does look less staged and more organic. And so all I did was I used push pins and I just pushed them into the wall and then I used that as a hanging point for the vines and then I also have it draped on my paper lantern and it looks really pretty when um, the lantern's on and it's nighttime and yeah I just love the look of this. I'll put in a picture of what it used to look like when I first put it up and when I first put it up I was like oh maybe I should take this down but it looks good now. <laughs> Next I just wanted to highlight my platycerium or my staghorn ferns, and I have a feeling that these will be more popular soon. They're very popular in Asia, but not so much in the US, at least among the social media plant communities. They're just very interesting looking plants. It's kind of like art on the wall or a sculptural piece. It's like a vegetarian reindeer head mount, but, or a moose, moose head, moose head mount, but it's not actually a dead animal. The next and last thing that I'm gonna show you guys is the balcony pond. Um, but first I wanted to showcase the lighting right now in my bedroom. It just looks really nice. And I feel like plant people would appreciate this. I think it's just very nice right now. Oh, and then look at Theo, also enjoying the sun. <laughs> As spring and summer approaches, my west-facing window will get more light. Also, Theo just climbed in his little cubby. But like I was saying earlier, just displaying plants within the home and in the room is really interesting and uh, keeps things fun for me. <laughs> okay, so now let's go out to the balcony. I feel like I should do a balcony update soon because I did do a whole video about turning my balcony into like a balcony garden, but 
since that video, it's changed a lot. Um, and it looks a lot better, I think. So yeah, let's go look at the balcony bench pond. So this is my balcony bench pond and I did some creative things with it. I'm growing uh, Hydrocotyle verticillatica that's emerging out of the water. And then I also have pearl weed in here, which is also growing out of the water. So I put a pot in here and then I elevated it. So just the top portion of the pot would be above the water line. And then I also have some floating plants. And then I also have some fish in here. And I did mention this in a previous video, but I have been feeding them the aphids from my aphid farm. My aphid farm. Um, so the aphids are like breeding and growing on these plants, which is why they kind of look a little bit deformed and janky, but then I use them for food for my fish. So circle of life or something. I also have this creeping fig growing in the back. I just thought I would add that. I love when things look grown in and I love plants climbing on things. I think I'll end the video here. I hope you guys got a little bit of inspiration maybe and perhaps you can try one of these things that I talked about. Okay and now the construction is starting again so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Say bye to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>